Hi, Hilda. Thank you for joining my vlog. Hello. So nice of you to take some time to speak with me. Uh, maybe you would like to introduce yourself a little bit. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your background. I'm Ilda Edimo. I'm a system engineer at VMware. Uh, I joined VMware in 2018, part of the graduate program in Ireland. And I've been working as a core SE in France since November 2019. So you have been with VMware for over two years now. Maybe you would like to talk a little bit about how you got to VMware. What was your educational background? How did you get into that graduate program? So um, how I actually got in IT is uh, really simple. So I know it's a really well-paid job. So that's why my focus was and I ended up joining the best university because in France, it's really important what university you go to, like prestige and that kind of things. So I ended up in um, a good, uh, what we call engineering school, university in other countries. So um, after three years there, I had to do a final project and it was on OpenStack actually. So that's how I started to get into all that cloud computing platform that I didn't know about. I did my internship on that. Um, then I got a job that on the say I would say on the same topic, but it wasn't for me. So I decided to join uh, VMware because they are basically the I would say the leader when it comes to virtualization, and that was what I was interested in. Nice. And uh, your first internship, you said it was around OpenStack, so that was probably not with the Ember. That... It was uh, with Soprasteria. It's a really big, I would say, integrator. I don't know if it's the right name, but in France. And they work for a lot, like for the government, for instance. And we had uh, just um, proof of concept around um, OpenStack because it's open source and they just like wanted to see what they could do with it. There's still a couple of things that intrigue me. So you said you went to university and it was very straightforward how you got into IT. But tell me a little bit more about maybe your childhood and your family. So I was born in France, but I grew up in Cameroon, Africa. So I lived there until I was 12 years old. Then I moved to France when I was 13. So my, my doctor was, um, oh, my father, sorry, was a doctor in pharmacy. <laughs> And my mom, she had a bachelor degree in science too. So she was a science teacher. And at first I wanted to be a neurosurgeon, but then I, it's too long. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, it's too long to become a neurosurgeon. It takes so much time, so many years. And I thought, well, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I love that story because I grew up in Africa as well. I grew up in Nigeria, which is actually right next to Cameroon. Yeah. And um, it's a very African thing, the thing around being a doctor. So my father wanted me to be a doctor and um, I kind of disappointed him by going into another field. So you, you came to, to uh, France when you were 13. Do you have siblings? Are they also technology minded or did they become doctors? My older sister also went to an engineering school like mechanical engineering, but now she works in um, supply chain. So it's not the same thing. And my, this, my sister after me, she's in, um, I would say not civil engineering, but you know, like construction site. That's why she's, she's studying. And the other, she's not even in high school. So <laughs> yeah. So it seems your uh, parents are very supportive and especially um, making sure that their daughters have a very good education. I would say my dad always told us, you can like suck at everything, but you need to be good at school. Like you need to be in good school, like mathematics, you need to be good at that. <laughs> I love that. I think it's very important that parents um, have an eye on, on, on their children's education. I think so people don't have to regret later the choice. And let's say you go like to a school you don't like, university, whatever, you can still move on to something else. But if you never get there in the first place, then you have to get there. It's a bit complicated, I would say. So among the options you chose, obviously it was IT. And how did you experience um, your studies, for example? Were there many women there? So I did first two years in, um, I would say they it's kind of university, but I would say college in some countries people call it like college. 
And out of a hundred people, we were like six women. Yeah. And then you then three years in university. And I think maybe 15% or 20% in my department were women, I would say, not, not more. That's not a lot, really. So um, I did an interview recently with Christina Hensel, who is the director of system engineering in, in Germany. And she told me when she studied in the 80s, there were like three women out of 100. And unfortunately, it feels like the situation has changed. Happened. You joined VMware in the yeah. new grad program. So how many people joined with you, actually? We were, this. I think it was 40 people or 50. I would say, but now it's 90 people this year. So it really grew. And we were nine S's and four of us were women. Okay. That is a better ratio, I think. So yeah. tell me a little bit about the graduate program, what it entails, what you did. So the idea of the graduate program is to actually help younger people um, find position in at VMware. Because if you look at VMware, the average SC sales or project manager, like is in late, they're in the late thirties, forties, fifties, sixties. So when you get out of high school, I mean, of university, you don't necessarily have a, a position and a place in the company, but you get that new talent, I would say, they actually um, tailored some roles with different steps over two, two years, I would say, and they actually help you, I would say, learn to get to that final position. So that means when you joined the new grad program, you got to learn firstly about the company, but also about all the different technologies that VMware sells, right? Yeah. So before, when, for me, there was no specialization. Now it's different. Some graduates become specialists. But you have to learn anyway all the portfolio of VMware. You may not be an expert, but you need to know what everything is. And um, tell me a little bit more about the other participants of this new grad pro uh, program. Were they all from, um, let me say, technical universities or were there different kinds of pro uh, jobs as well? So we had solution engineer, sales, project manager, consultant. Now they also have client associates. They have some solution arch architect. Some people came from a technical background, some from a sales background. And actually last year they took someone who was in bio biology or something to be an essay. Okay, that sounds really good because uh, it gives me the feeling that no matter what your background is, there might be a space for you in VMware. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a deep technical position like your own, right? Yeah, yes, and even if you get out of university, we learn things in university, but when you get into the working place, it's not the same thing. Okay, so this is a dual opportunity then. So you get to know about the products, but the other side is that you can also have the opportunity to get used to the corporate environment of working, right? Because not everybody has prior work experience. So I would say there's also other things when you, you take the, the job because you don't know much and you have to learn but it's hard to get to the level of someone that's been working for 25 years. So sometimes you feel, and I feel like you're struggling because you know you don't know as much as the other, but you are part of like you managing accounts and the fact that you still have to learn and then other team, like team members know more than you. Sometimes you feel like you're lacking, unfortunately, but it's part of the experience, I would say. I think um, there's also the aspect of learning to work in a team. And um, when you say, especially when you talk about that you are the one who has maybe less experience, there's this opportunity to learn from people who are more experienced, right? I mean, it's not about lacking, it's about having the opportunity to grow, right? 
I, I would say actually in my role as an SE, technical things, you can learn them. You can go online, you can do go to webinars and training. But I have mentors, I have a great manager, I have people helping me more on the human side of things, the social side of, of work. And I think that's also important. And then some young you people like me may not be aware of it. And I think that's where mentoring should be more important than just talking about technical and also understanding strategy when it comes to working customers. That's also something you can learn from like more senior coworkers. Very true. So when you look at yourself and your skills, what do you think are the characteristics that make you a good as E? That's a really good question. <laughs> I would say that I kind of, I tend to listen a lot. I'm not someone who talks a lot. I let the customer talk and I listen to what they have to say, what they want and what they need. I tend to be reactive. So if a customer asks for something and I will make sure to find the answer somewhere and to find the right person to help them because as the core see, I don't know everything and there are other people who know more than me. So that's my, I think my advantages, I would say my strong points. Yes, very good. Listening is a very big, um, or let's say listening is a very important skill to have when working with customers and trying to find out what solutions are right for them. So this is something I totally agree with. When you think about your career at VMware, where do you see yourself going? I'm actually thinking about it <laughs> and I don't have an answer yet. I don't think I will become a specialist because I, I, I like talking about a bit about everything. So, so far I would say solution engineer, at least in the next five years. Okay. So, but you do feel that you have options of progression. So there are different paths op open to you, right? Oh, yes. That, that's, yeah. If I wanted to be a specialist, I know I could do it. Some S's become sales. So that's a possibility of being a manager, even though like I'm not there yet. But I, I don't feel like I have to, to only be an S's. Um, that brings me to an interesting point because you said only NSC. When you say only NSC, maybe you can talk a little about what your day actually looks like when, what, what does this role really entail? Yeah, I actually manage the Paris, um, region. I manage 75 accounts, I would say, plus all the universities in France. So day to day job, I would say 30% is administrative stuff. So helping customer with their licenses and any kind of post sales support. Then 50% meeting, whether it's um, meeting with specialists, meeting with PS organization, or just me and the customers. Then 20% training, but sometimes it's more because sometimes it's only days and customers are not here, so it depends on the period. Sometimes I train more than I actually talk to customer. We talked about it, uh, how you got to VMware. We talked about what you do. Um, tell me a little bit about what you like about working at VMware. Well, I'll, I would like, I like the salary. <laughs> I would say that. But what I actually like is I learn more about myself. Like I used to think I was always right. It's always the, like the fault of other people. It's not my fault. And I should get to learn that when you work with other people, it's not always someone's fault. And you need to understand also the position of other people. And you need to, to, to be aware of what you say. And I'm trying to learn more that, okay, if something hard happened, sometimes I tend to be like, oh, it's not my fault but it won't get me anywhere. Like my quota won't be filled and I'll have issues. So, so more on the human side, yeah. So you mean you have actually progressed in terms of your 
personal development um, yeah. by working here. That's actually great to hear. And um, from the whole atmosphere of the company, you already talked about the fact that you have mentors and you have support. So you enjoy the atmosphere at VMware. Yeah, <laughs> I think because I believe I've seen the inside organization. So I used to be an inside SE when I joined VMware and the field organization. So it's a bit different because I think because people are younger in the inside roles, I would say. So the, the dynamics are a bit different, but overall people usually think as a team. So they will make sure to work as a team to uh, achieve the objectives. And if it means helping you, then they will help you. Okay, that's great. So you would actually recommend to join the new grad program and join the Ember? Yes, I would because I'm 25, I'm an SC. Uh, if I wasn't at VMware, it would have taken me 10, 15 years. So let's just save 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear, really. Okay, thank you, Hilda. You're welcome. Um, and maybe um, some tips for people out there. I would just say as a like tips, I know people who wouldn't apply to certain companies because they think they don't necessarily have all the knowledge to get into the company. Because I, for instance, I was rejected at Cisco um, grad program, but I still got at VMware grad program. So I would say people, of course, don't be delusional, but even if you have 50% of what a job asks, whether it's a graduate program or like a job somewhere else, still apply. Don't think, oh, they won't take me. You don't even know what they will say. So, yeah. Wow, that's really good advice. Thank you for that. I think that's very important to understand that you always have to try. Never self-reject. That's something I read recently that a lot of people do. They look at an opportunity and then they reject themselves. They don't even try. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you for that. That's a great um, synopsis maybe of, uh, or maybe a great endpoint for this um, interview, I think. So Hilda, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for telling me about the graduate program. I don't know a lot about that myself because obviously I'm one of those older people. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Bye Hilda. Bye-bye.